minute. Uh, yeah. Jenny. Hello, Julia. I know I'm probably the last person you expected to see or wanted to. It's all right. Uh, please come in. And you're not exactly someone I want to see either. It's just that we need to talk. Jenny, this is about Ned and me. No, I didn't come here to talk about your affair with my husband. It's not an affair. You and Ned are legally separated. That's right, Julia. Ned and I are finished, so I really don't give a damn if you're together. Really? Why don't I believe that? I don't care what you believe. I'm here about a tape. Tape? Oh, come on, Julia. You know all about it. Just like you know about the affair that I had with Senator Kensington when I was 16. Is it coming back to you now? All right. Why do we have to discuss all of this? We have to do it right now? Yes, we do. We really need to talk about it. You see, I know that Ned has a tape of the senator and I discussing that affair, and I know that he is blackmailing the senator into getting a Senate committee to help you two get an airline. Jenny, this isn't something that you and I should be discussing. Yes, it is. Because the bottom line is, I'm here to beg you to stop Ned from using that tape. Somebody explain to me the insanity that rules this household. Tracy, do you mind if I finish this last chapter before we discuss the family? I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the servants. Reginald has taken a vacation. Oh, mercy. Shall I call the cops? Why he would need a vacation is beyond me. Well, considering the way you treat him, perhaps it's long overdue. I am more than civil to Reginald, considering his station in life. Somewhere near the bottom of the human condition. He is barely trained to wipe his feet before he comes into our house, much less serve as our butler. Well, he's only going to be gone a few days. Think how much you can enjoy the clean floors in the meantime. You know, Daddy, I don't think you really grasp the delicate interplay between Quartermain and servant. Well, as long as he brings me my slippers every evening at 8 p.m., I'm satisfied. <laughs> Excuse me. Senator Jack Kensington is here to see you both. Oh, <laughs> send him in. Reginald might not have a job to come home to. <laughs> Hello, Edward. Oh, Hello, Jack. It's a pleasure to see you, as always. I am very grateful you could see me on such short notice. Uh, grateful? <laughs> well, I'm curious as hell as to why you'd fly in from uh, Washington. <laughs> well, I have a small problem. And unfortunately, its name is Ned Ashton. My son a problem? <laughs> there must be some mistake. Frankly, Edward, your grandson is out to destroy my career. And I want you to make sure he doesn't. Because I am not going to sit around and let him ruin my life. Hi, Karen. Doing the drudge work, I see. No one does drudge work better than you. <laughs> what can I get for you, Brenda? Some stick in your mouth? Um, I think I'll have some hot chocolate. Easy on the whipped cream. Oh, that's right. You have to watch what you eat, don't you? I guess being so squat, you put on the weight pretty easily. Uh, at least I'm winning the battle. Doesn't Ruby teach you to smile when you have customers? Is that better? That's lovely. You know, I'd be smiling all over the place if I were you, after what happened at school today. What are you talking about, Brenda? Oh, come on, the way Jason's hanging all over you. Mm hmm? You must have taken the news about Jagger pretty well. Jason and I are none of your business, okay? <clears throat> Look, I'm just happy for you. I mean, you don't want things to be screwed up between you and Jason now that Jagger's gone. Brenda, I'm not going to talk to you about this, okay? So shut up. Oh, come on, Karen. I already know all about it. You don't know anything. Really? I know that Jagger left because of Jason. He probably figured you'd be better off with a rich guy. He probably thinks you need that little extra boost. I just love a man with nobility. Would you like some more whipped cream? <gasps> I'm happy for you, Karen. I mean, every time I see Jagger, I'm going to have to tell him how well you and Jason are doing. Next time I see him will be soon. Hi, Meg. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, Meg. I'm fine. But 
Can I, can I do something for you? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for Dr. Chamberlain. Well, he's in, but are you sure you want to see him? Why, are you surprised? Yes, I am. After what he did to Felicia, I'm surprised you'd ever want to see that man again. Good point. Well, he's here somewhere. I don't know exactly where he is, but... Hey, hey, hey! You went to see Felicia at the institution. No. Shut up! You pull another stuff like that, and there won't be enough doctors in this hospital to put all the pieces back together again. Do they put steroids in the water or something? Let go of me, Mac. Let go of me. You know, I'm getting real tired of these little threats of yours. Through making threats, Chamberlain, consider it a promise. Oh, call it whatever you want, Mac. You can't stop me from going to that hospital. I happen to treat patients there. Oh, right, sure you do. Yeah, maybe you've heard of them. They're called mothers of small children. Bull! I treat my patients at that hospital. From time to time, I may stop in and see Felicia. And you know something, man? There's not a damn thing you can do about it. Maybe there is. No, yeah. Maybe there is. This is a true place for me to get off of me. Hey, Matt, Matt, come on. Get hold of yourself, man. Come on, knock it off. Thanks, gentlemen. You know something, Matt? You, know you, you, know something, Matt? you really ought to watch that temper of yours. People are going to start to think you're as unbalanced and violent as Felicia is. Jack back in Port Charles? Is that how you saw him? No, he's not. I know where he is, though. Where? Karen, I'm really sorry, but I can't tell you. Jack doesn't want anyone to know where he's at. I don't believe you. The only person that Jagger wants to see right now is me. You're such a liar. You're just making this whole thing up, Brenda. Oh, really? Well, believe what you want, Karen. But I did go and see him. And I did stay the night. And I do plan on doing it again. <laughs> oh my gosh! <gasps> Julia, it wasn't easy for me to come here. I'm sure that it wasn't, but I really don't know what you think I should do. I need your help. And I'm not leaving here until I have it. Denny, I don't feel comfortable talking about that tape. It's really between you and Ned. No, it isn't. And not anymore. Julia, I'm begging you. Ned won't talk to me. He's too angry. I really don't think you have anything to worry about, okay? That's all I can Why? Say. I mean, and do you tell you say? something? Julia, tell me. What did he say? You know what kind of businessman Ned is just as well as anyone. He knows what he's doing. He said no one would get hurt. No one's going to get hurt. Listen, not only is he going to destroy Senator Kensington's career, but he is going to drag my name through every tabloid in the country. Jenny, I would help you if I could, but I, I really, I sincerely believe that you have nothing to worry about. Besides, I can't control what Ned does. Aren't you in on this airline deal together? Yes, but I'm handling the finance. It's Ned that's handling politics. And you don't care how dirty he gets? You just close your eyes? Julia, this is something that you could stop if you wanted to. There is nothing to stop. Jenny, the only way Ned could make sure that he won't have to use that tape is to make sure everybody believes he will. Well, I believe that he will. Look, if you don't, you're a fool. Then I'm a fool. Julia, we used to be friends. I mean, not that that counts for much anymore, but... Are you willing to stand by and let two more lives be ruined? Isn't that tape done enough damage? Think about it. It's already ruined two marriages. Julia, I... Well, well, well. If it isn't the lying tramp herself. Why my grandson would want to destroy your career is beyond me. Daddy Jack's exaggerating. Hardly. Why don't we discuss this in the other room privately, you and I? Forget it, Tracy. If uh, Ned's up to some mischief, I'd like to know what it is. Daddy, it's no big deal. No big deal? Everything you've spent years to achieve is about to be destroyed? 
something tells me I need a drink. Edward, there's a tape concerning an affair I had with a young lady. Oh, yeah, I know about those things. Uh, young ladies, that is. This tape, which your grandson is holding over my head, was gotten by illegal means by none other than your daughter. Think you better make that drink a double, Dad. <laughs> Tracy was blackmailing Jenny with that tape, and Ned is now blackmailing me. Blackmail is a serious charge, Jack. Tracy, do you want to fill in the details, or shall I? Well, I think since you're the one that had the affair with Jenny, you ought to do it. Affair with Jenny? It was a long time ago, Edward. Yes, she was 16 at the time, Daddy. Our little Jenny? Our little Jenny. She even managed to get herself pregnant. Of course, she did, Miss Carey. Sorry I had to find out this way at all. Oh, your concern is so touching, considering nobody invited you here. Did you expect me to just sit around and let Ned destroy my life? Why not? You sat back and let Jenny's life get ruined. What happened to Jenny was unfortunate indiscretion. That was then. This is now. Which means you're dumping it in our lap. Exactly where it belongs. If you expect me to get Ned to back off, forget it. Ned's not the back-off type. However, with a little political maneuvering... Ned gets his airline, you get to keep your job. Is that how you think this is going to work? Yeah. Like my father says, the Quartermain never backs down. What about ELQ? You need Washington to finesse those delicate interstate and international deals, don't you? Need I say more? It sounds like a threat to me, Senator. Does that sound like a threat to you, Tracy? Call it what you want, but I'm not going to let your family ruin my career. I'm all done. Egg rolls. I want some chicken chow man. Oh, why don't we wait and eat that afterwards? I mean, we are eating afterwards, remember? Hmm. Hmm. Do you realize it's been two hours? Yeah, I know. Yeah, two hours. No, that's what I get for. Coming home to pick up some papers in the middle of the day. <laughs> it's better than me delivering them, I think. Yeah, I yeah, am, because it's, a, it's been entirely, entirely too long. Too long. I know, well, we're not going to let that happen again, are we? Hmm. Hmm? You know, ever since you started looking at this uh, custody business from a different angle, things have certainly improved. Well, that just happened yesterday. I just think what's going to happen by the end of the week. Mm. I can hardly wait. Mm. No, seriously, Sean, I... That talk you had with me yesterday knocked me for a loop. I don't want to lose you. I missed you. Mm. Honey, all we gotta do... is communicate better, that's all. Really? Mm-hmm. Kind of like what we've been doing all afternoon. Well... Start. It's also in the middle. Oh, and an end. Oh, God. And this is a really groovy table, isn't it? Nice legs. Now, come on, tell me about the table. Because I did a lot of hard work to get this table. Do you have any idea how much money I laid out for this table? I had to give the guy 20 bucks to get this table. Also, I guess you didn't see the additional 30 I had to slip and, you know, just, just secure the deal. 50 bucks for this table? Huh? Oh, Hollywood. What? You know, we've been here like 10 minutes. I've fallen in love three times. How am I supposed to enjoy the uh, 50 bucks for this table? There's another one of those of actresses whose name I can't away. remember. Oh, man. Bucks. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ask her to come sit with us. For 50 oh, bucks, they'd throw her in with the lunch, and you're not going anywhere. Sit down. We got business to take care of first. <laughs> No, you have business to take care of. I'm here on vacation. That's Mel Gibson. That is Mel Gibson. The waiter is Mel Gibson? That's a wait. Does everybody in this town look like a movie star? I think all the movie stars look like waiters. You know, we should get a bunch of, uh, you know, those maps to the, to the stars' homes. We should, because they're, um... You know what I do want to do? I want to go to the Wax Museum. Yeah! You know, I mean, after all, L.A. is the, the mecca of cultural life, right? Hey, pal, you mecca on your own time, all right? We got business to take care of. We take care of the business first. We can go wherever you want. We can go culture or anything you want to culture. Okay. 
<clears throat> just got later, we early. It's fashionably late. So what do you think? I look like a reporter. Try to look more intelligent around the eyes. Okay. Uh, okay, what about this? And don't act goofy. This is Tiffany's ex-producer. We've got to play the con on him perfectly because if we get... If we get hooked up somehow on this and we don't pull this off, we're going to be in big trouble. Okay. Okay. You know, if we fool him, maybe we should try and get some, you know, real acting work. This That'd is real acting work. I'm paying for your lunch, ain't I? Yeah, well, good luck. Here he comes. Mr. Main? Oh, hi. Larry Laughlin. Larry, call me Marco, please. Pleasure. You can call me Reg. Reginald, if you're having a bad day. Hi, <laughs> uh, how are you? Larry. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is really a very cool place. Yeah, well, hey, David, how are you? They know me here. I could have gotten us a much better table, but... Well, I thought this was the best table, you know. It's the oh, third I... best. But you must pay a fortune for it. <laughs> no. Well, no. No, not at all. Good. Well, my secretary says you're here to do a feature on me. Uh, yeah, yes. and you know, she was not very nice. She I was got a very tell... nice woman. How can you say that? She was a very nice... She was just protecting this man. Well, a man in my position needs protection. Of course you do, <laughs> and we understand that yeah. entirely. Uh, as a matter of fact, we want to get right into the business here because there's work that we want to discuss. And, and what we'd like to do is write this article about your entire career, but we'd like to make it more interesting than the normal article. Starting with my humble beginnings career. right on through to the three Academy Award nominations, the whole ball of wax. Well, we'd Golden like to Globes, focus the, uh... on the early years, if you don't mind. Why? Like I said, they were humble. Yeah, but like I said, we think they might be a little more interesting, more colorful, as a matter of fact. Than all My three Hollywood Academy Award-nominated films grossed over 100 mil. Wow! <clears throat> but what about your first film? Well, it did okay at the drive-ins. It was a low-budget film, right? Low budget. <laughs> Talk about dirt cheap. Yes, didn't you have some rather natural experiences occur on that film? Look, you don't want to talk about this, do you? Oh, we do. We want to start there, of course. We won't focus on it entirely. Of course, we'll go through the whole panoply of series of events of your career to its ultimate crescendo yeah. of this you wonderful... Know, and now this article of yours will have pictures of my house in Beverly Hills, won't it? Hey, babe. We want to focus on Trixie Tackles, Tennessee. Wild title, huh? It generated some heat, yeah. I could say that again. What about some of the people who were in it? Nobody from that film became a star, if that's what you're looking for. What about Trixie? Or Tiffany? Wasn't that Tiffany something? Fourth Oh, hi, Mom. You want a coffee break? Yeah, but it's gonna have to be a quick one, because Scotty's out of the office today, and I'm the only one answering the phones. <sighs> Where is he? I thought he was working so hard. Yeah, he has been doing slave hours on uh, <clears throat> Glacier's Appeal, but I don't know. For some reason, he took off today. Hmm. Was he sick? No, when I talked to him, he didn't sound sick. He sounded strange. Hmm. Maybe he and his wife had a fight? No, he and Dominique are so happy they never fight. But, you know, come to think of it, he sounded kind of sad. Well, maybe he'll tell you about it when he gets back. Yeah. You know... The more I think about it, it sounded like something was really bothering him. Well, you guys are old friends. Maybe he'll confide in you. No, oh, I hope so. I mean, I like him so much, you know. I'm grateful to him for giving me this job. And hey, what about you? You look kind of sad, too. What's wrong? Brenda was by here. Oh, boy. Causing more trouble? She said she saw Jagger. Oh, boy, I bet she couldn't wait to tell you that. Well, of course not. She lives to make me mad. Hey, honey, I know it's hard, but just try to ignore her, okay? Now, did she tell you where Jagger is? No, but she sure told me that she spent the night with him. Oh. Uh, do you believe her? Well, Mom, I don't even know if I believe that she even saw him. I know. With Brenda, it's kind of hard to know what to believe, isn't it? Except if she did see him, then that means he's... He's not far from poor Charles. Mm. So you're thinking if he's nearby, why hasn't he called you, right? Well, I mean, why did he see her and not me? Well, honey, maybe that is something you should think about. I mean, maybe he doesn't care about me that much. Okay? Listen, if Brenda saw Jagger and if she slept with him, maybe that's... That's such a great sign. Well, are you saying that I should just forget about it? Well, he didn't call you, did he? Well, no, but... 
person, honey. If Jagger's nearby and he's what? spending all his time with Brendan, Mom, then... I know, but it's not going to be that easy. I guess you're right. Maybe it is her that he wants to see instead of me. I Feeling better, Mike? Not really, but uh, thanks for the call, Keith. You know what? What really bothers me, Doc, is I don't understand how you can keep Ryan Chamberlain on staff. Mac, the jury found Felicia guilty, not Ryan. But he's dangerous. I don't care what the jury said. Dad, I have to agree with Mac on this one. I'm sorry, but under the circumstances, I just can't let him go. I told Tom once before, it might open a lawsuit against the hospital. Then maybe you'll find this interesting. Chamberlain paid Felicia a visit at the institution. He what? At the mental hospital? Yeah, well, supposedly he's taking care of patients. Therapy for mothers with small children. But he scared the hell out of Felicia, and he made a point letting her know that he can come and go anytime he wants. It's very peculiar. As a doctor, Ryan should realize how harmful that could be to Felicia right now. That's because he's not thinking about Felicia. He's thinking about himself. Yeah, well, he's the last person she needs to see right now. Well, that's why I was on top of him when you pulled me off. Well, listen, Dad, like I said before, in my opinion, Ryan fits a standard pattern of a sociopath. You, you don't have do any something. proof, son, not anything concrete. Isn't there something you doctors can do about that? Well, I'm going to call the head doctor of that institution and ask him to make sure that Ryan doesn't bother Felicia anymore, doesn't see her. That's great. That's great. How soon can you make the call? As soon as I can get back to my office. Now, is there anything else I can do for him? Well, yeah, I'd like to look at Chamberlain's files. Okay, this time my answer is yes. Great. All right. And I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Ryan myself. This is the best news I've heard in a long time, Doc. Thank I'll you very much. I'll go make that call to the institution right, right now. Listen, I'm going to go I have some patience to see. It's good news, man. Thanks. Thanks. Good news. Matt, Matt, I was Hi. waiting for them to go so I could tell you something. For whatever it's worth, I believe in my heart that Felicia was right from the start. I know Ryan is sick because I saw that temper of his. So I hope they get him and free Felicia as soon as possible. Well, thanks, but let's not get too optimistic. But just maybe. Maybe we're on the right road. Maybe. Good. Good. Bye. 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 What are you doing here, Jimmy? I'm here about that tape, Ned. Ah, uh, yes. The tape. You're blackmailing Senator Kensington with it. And I asked Julia to ask you to stop. But I'll ask you. Ask away. Don't use that tape, Ned. Read my lips. Try and stop me. I can't believe that you would stoop this low. You should also give the senator a message and tell him time is running out. You're really out to destroy him, aren't you? This is strictly a business proposition. I get the airline, and he gets to keep his career. And what about me? Oh, yes, we can't forget about you, can we? I can just see you headlining the 6 o'clock news, not to mention the tabloids. I can't believe I married somebody this cruel. You're going to be a big hit in the supermarkets. I knew this wasn't about business, Ned. It's about revenge. You can't forgive me for what happened. And now you'll do anything to get back at me. All I want is that airline. You should know that by now. And you should also know that a quarter man stops at nothing till he gets what he wants. This is really what makes you happy, isn't it? No matter who it hurts. I think you should tell your um, cradle-robbing boyfriend to cooperate. And then we'll all be happy, okay? You're worse than cruel, Ned. You're ruthless. Why did it take me so long to see that? I must have been blind. That wasn't the nicest thing you've ever done. Well, I'm not trying to be nice. I'm trying to get us an airline. But is it worth all the pain we're causing? Do we or do we not want an airline? We do, but Ned... Do you realize how much money we're going to make with that airline? I do. And we know what the bottom line is, don't we? Look... To get what we want. But do we have to hurt Jenny any more than we already have? If your conscience is bothering you, it's a little too late. The threat is on the table. The next move is Kensington's. Look, I don't mean to doubt you, Ned. I know you've done your homework. <sighs> Kensington's going to come through for us. 
right? Right. In fact, he's obviously already on the run. That's why I sick Jenny after you. <sighs> it almost worked. She begged me to stop you. But I don't need to, right? Right. <laughs> we are so close to nailing this guy. He's hanging there, baby. Stay strong. We're gonna get everything we want. Hello. Mother? I knew you wouldn't mind my barging in. Would it matter if I did? I need to speak to my son. Oh. By all means, we'll see you later. Hey, just be a minute. Oh, it's a pleasure, you. Tracy. Well, Mother? Fine mess you've gotten us into, Ned. Excuse me? Senator Jack Kensington, remember him? How can I forget him? He paid a visit to your grandfather and me today. Really? He's threatening us, Ned. You make that tape public and he will make sure that Washington is less than kind to ELQ. He's bluffing. No, Ned, I don't think he's bluffing. Well, just the fact that he's threatening us means that he's about to cave in. I don't get the logic there, Ned. Well, if I release the tape, the senator will be ruined. He'll be in no position to cause trouble for ELQ. Not a risk I care to take, Ned. Well, I'm willing to take it. Your grandfather and I want you to back off, Ned. Not till I get my airline. <laughs> I don't think I'm getting my point across. This is not up for discussion. This is an order from your grandfather. I don't give a damn. I don't take orders from anyone. Am I hearing things? I am not backing off from the senator. That's final. This is ELQ business, Ned. And I'm the CEO. And I make the decisions. Oh, and aren't they just fabulous decisions, driven by revenge and not good business sense? I think it makes very good business sense to acquire this airline, no matter what it takes. At the risk of losing everything we already have, Ned? I know what I'm doing, Mother, so why don't you just run off, go find Marco, and do some fundraising, all right? Because I am not backing off. getting dressed because I have to go back to the office. <laughs> I think you'd be too tired to go back to work by now. Well, I am too tired to go back to work, but I'm still going. As soon as I finish tying my tie, oh, come drinking on. my coffee. Let's go back <clears throat> upstairs for just a few minutes. What do you say? Now, that's a, <clears throat> it's a, a very tempting offer, mm -hmm. but you know, the police commissioner inside of me Don't keeps answer. saying no, no, no. Don't just save, save the thought. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Save it. Save it. Yeah, your office said I'd find you. Here. Uh, 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 it's all right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Ann. It's okay. Hi, Tiff. Hi. Hi, right, what's you? up? Did you keep that restraining order against Chamberlain? Well, I talked to the judge, now I'm waiting to hear back. Well, can we move it along a little fast? We gotta keep this guy away from Felicia. Oh. Excuse me, will you? Donnelly. Yeah, Garcia. Yeah? Oh, really? No, 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 that's all right. Um, I'll see you in a little while. Bye. Apparently, there was a, an incident between you and Ryan at the hospital. We had about an hour ago. Yeah. Sure, he, he flat out said he could see Felicia any time he wants. And what did you do? Luckily, Steve and Tom Hardy came along just in time. Obviously not soon enough. Is that what that phone exactly call was about? Exactly what that phone call was about, because Ryan went down to headquarters and lodged a complaint against you. Against me? Yeah, he said you threatened him with bodily harm. I don't believe this. Oh, it gets worse. He also got a restraining order against you. You can't go near him. my life. Oh, by the way, you know
know those breakfast rolls that Jagger likes so much? I forget what those are called. Mm, they're bear claws. Oh, right. Bear claws. I don't see any around here today. Does Ruby usually get them in every day? Yes, but I never get them in every day. Oh, good. I think I'll stop by and pick some up next time I go and visit Jagger. Excuse me. Let's sit over here, sure. shall we? I think I've got a good idea what this is about, Steve. Oh, later, please. Yes? This is about what happened earlier with Mac. I'm, I'm very sorry about that, but I've already taken steps to make sure that's not going to happen again. Oh, what kind of steps? You know, I've begun to wonder if I should even remain on staff. I see. I think you'll agree with me that the hospital doesn't need any more bad publicity. Well, we've certainly had our share of that lately. Yeah, and I hate to think that I'm the cause of any embarrassment for you or the rest of the staff. Even before what happened today, I've begun to think seriously about resigning. To be honest with you, Ryan, I've given that some serious thought, too. Well, have you? Yes, especially since I heard that you paid Felicia a visit at that institution. That was more a matter of running into Good her. Good Lord, what were you thinking? It's no secret how I feel about her. I just wanted to make sure she was all right, that's all. You know, up, up till now, I've defended you, mainly because we didn't have any clear-cut evidence to make the case. But now that you've gone to visit Felicia at that institution, it doesn't make sense. You're a doctor. You should know better. Steve, I didn't even want her to see me there. She was talking with one of the assistants. She seemed lucid. Now, I'll admit it was a bad call, but I sure didn't mean to upset her. But you did. I think it would be very wise of you to completely avoid Felicia from here on. What's that, an order? Let's just call it strong advice. Very strong. A restraining order. A restraining order against me. I don't believe this. No one said the man was dumb. You mean I... I can't see him, but he can see Felicia any time he wants. Look, I don't like this idea any more than you do. No court order is going to keep me from seeing him, Sean. I wish you would worry less about uh, fighting with Ryan and concentrate more on putting the man behind bars. Sean, whenever I think of Felicia being locked up, I want to kill him. Well, that's certainly going to help uh, Felicia get freed. You know, what we really have to do is just double up and concentrate on what we know about the man and keep going at it. Well, look, Steve Hardy's going to let me look at his files. I've already looked at it. There's nothing in there that's going to disprove Ryan's story. Well, let me look at it myself, all right? Look, two sets of eyes might be better than one. It might be something that you missed. I hope you're right. Something's got to give in this case, Sean. We've got to prove Chamberlain is guilty. Kensington has nothing to worry about. Trust me. Ooh, trust is a tough one for me, but I'll work on it. You. Good. Because what I'm doing is the only way. Ned, how nice to see you. And you. Well, if it isn't Port Charles's answer to Madonna. And not knocking as usual. Hey, did I interrupt anything here? No, no, nothing at all. I was just on my way out. Mm -hmm. Don't leave on account of me. Wouldn't think of it. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. <sighs> he is so tasty. Hey, what's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. Ultimately, it is that damn tape. Tape? Oh, the tape that brought you and Ned together. No, Elvis's greatest hits, you know what tape uh -huh. I mean. Uh -huh. What's wrong now? What? Oh, nothing. Just a little blackmail. Oh, blackmail. Jeez, for a second I thought it was something serious. This is serious. Like... This involves Jenny, who I've already heard enough, thanks to somebody in this room. Oh, great. Blame it on me, as usual. Hey. Wow, you are really taking this seriously. Yeah, I am. And when are you going to start to take it seriously? How many people have to get hurt? How many marriages have to get ruined, huh? 
How many times are you going to yell at me about this? As many times as it takes. <sighs> Look, if they broke up over this situation, they were going to break up somewhere along the line anyways. Hey, at least you have someone to wake up to now, huh? I don't even think you really intended for all this to happen. Julia, are you with Ned? Yes. Are you happy? I give up. I give up on you. You know, deep down, I think you really liked the fact that I was looking out for you. Paul doesn't live here anymore, Jenny. Well, I'm not here to see Paul. Why have you returned to the scene of the crime? The only crime was committed by you. That's why I'm here to see you. You've seen me, now you can go. You are a mean, vicious, selfish woman, and you have raised Ned to be just like you. <laughs> Thank you. I take that as a compliment. Only you would. Oh, please, would you cut to the chase? Have you any idea how much trouble you've caused? Let's see. I taped a conversation between a senator and a slut. I think that America will thank me. Don't you care about the innocent people that you're hurting? Who's innocent? The senator's family. For oh, one. of course you're here to protect the senator's family. I think not. I think you're only here to protect yourself. And as far as I'm concerned, we have nothing to talk about because you're going to hurt as much as I do. How can you be so blind to the truth? You know what, Jenny? back to the office. Oh, I don't either, honey, but I promised Mac I'd meet him at headquarters. Were these the files that you came home to get earlier? Yes, these are the files I came home to get earlier. And I put the, don't distract me. Oh, okay. When will you be home? Uh, if I were you, I wouldn't wait up for me. Oh, well, I tell you what, if I'm asleep, you promise to wake me up? Well, yeah, yeah, I just, I just, just might do that. Okay. Uh, I like old times, innit? Oh, yeah. I'm finally remembering why I married you. Mr. Harmon, yes, I'm glad I caught you. Yes, it's Tiffany. I just thought of something else that might help in the custody case. Well, how do you think the judge would react to finding out that Bobby Jones has a tenant in her house that was just convicted of attempted murder? A very prominent doctor. Well, do you think it's a safe environment for Lucas? Well, we've certainly heard of Carol Faraday. <laughs> I'm surprised that you haven't heard of us, though. You know, we're very big in Europe. Well, when you work in the daytime interested... soap, there's a very little time for the outside world. Yes, you but we're very interested. Uh, Reginaldo here doesn't speak English. He won't be participating in this negotiating process, but he's a very big fan of yours. I want you to understand that. Oh, how sweet. Uh -huh. How many years have you been watching the show? Dieci. Dieci. Quanto uh, anni? Dieci. Uh, uh, si. Oh, really, but we're not shown in Europe. And if you spend all that time there, how did you see my... In between producing, he comes over here, he goes to the library, he checks out the tapes in Italian, he reads the subtitles, he's very good at that, but he can't negotiate very well. <laughs> so you let me take care of this while you and I discuss our putting you in one of our movies. I'm perfect for the part. And that's, of course, what we what thought. What kind of building we... am I going to get? You know, the important thing, Carol, is that we have found each other. Bellissima! Eh, hey, certo, montagna, sorriggia, eh, hey, mannaggia, la mamma, bellissima, eh, hey, Reginaldo, eh, eh, qui, è bella, eh, 
<laughs> you know, you know, you look so much younger in this. You look now, she looks better now than she's ever looked in her life, for crying out loud. Like you look now better than you looked when you did Trixie Tackles, Tennessee. You saw that? I certainly, every inch of it I saw. Believe me, oh. you are. I mean, you look good now. You, there was this one other woman in the film. She wasn't anywhere nearly as good looking as you. It was Tiffany, what's her oh, name? Oh, Tiffany we... Hill. Oh, of course, I remember her. Who could forget her? Right. Oh, her real name was Elsie Mae Crumholtz. Fresh off the farm. Practically had to teach her how to wear a G-string. Oh, that would make me nervous. Hmm. I mean, hmm. you know, working with someone that inexperienced. Oh, it depends on what you call inexperienced. Tiffany was the producer's girlfriend. Are you sure about that? Oh, Mr. Dane, they were always in her dressing room and they weren't discussing the script. Do you know what I mean? Uh, oh, my God, how unprofessional yes. the mic. I mean, I hope she was unprofessional. I mean, you Actually, know, I think they'd both rather forget that movie. <laughs> that bad, huh? That I mean, moto, moto male, that bad. That hot. Trixie Tackles, Tennessee was those, one of those kinds of films that you don't show in the regular theaters. If you catch my drift. Tonight at 10, 9 central, Patrick Duffy hosts TV.